Okay, very good morning everyone. Hope you had an excellent weekend. Monday the 12th of August. Um, as you can see, usual routine on a Monday. Got the calendar here to the side, so I'm uh, going to split this uh, delivery into two sessions. Me looking at the fundamentals. I'll try to highlight some of the real uh, calendar events that could act as real pivot points for different assets and, and the reasons why. And then my colleague Sam's going to come on and look at the market much more from a technical perspective and looking at the charts in more detail, trade setups, not just for today, but also for the week ahead. Um, so quick overview, though, of general sentiment for this morning and a yeah, little bit of risk appetite in terms of uh, equity markets, a little bit higher this morning. The actual fix for the PBOC, I mean, one, I did tweet on my way into work this morning, the first number I look at uh, when I wake up, maybe I'm a little bit sad, um, but, but the first thing I check these days is the yuan fix, because that is the barometer, really, the kind of um, the trigger point of kind of market sensitivity or has been in the last week. And that came in at 7.0211 per dollar. Uh, so that was weaker than Friday setting, but stronger than market expectations. So again, this kind of measured uh, devaluing of their currency continues. But again, as long as it's being done in a very controlled manner, then the markets are quite comfortable with that. And again, even though their currency is weakening, it's actually been done in a way that's actually slightly stronger than expected. So. Um, no real risk coming from that, if anything, a little bit of relief. Overnight in Asia, a little bit quiet. You have got a Japanese holiday, uh, Singapore, Thailand, lots of other nations as well in the Asia Pacific region are closed. Um, so fairly quiet. But overall, stock futures this morning, you can see, off to a positive footing. Um, DAX already up 123 on the session. Eurostox has run up to uh, its R1 had a rejection uh, in the futures, that is, uh, but again, higher this morning. Uh, elsewhere in the other charts, oil's pretty quiet. Gold testing back towards a pullback on that $1,500 handle. Uh, technically and psychologically relevant. I'll let Sam look at that, though, in more detail. Uh, then the other thing that's quite interesting here is the currency markets. Got some real evident euro weakness. Um, Italy, of course, very much in focus. Um, I'm not sure if you caught Salvini um, getting his sunblock on down in uh, southern Italy, catching some rays, trying to really cajole sentiment in southern Italy, obviously where his uh, La Liga party is particularly pop popular. Um, this coming after last week, we heard, of course, that he's looking to break up the existing coalition government and look to run on his own. Uh, to take advantage of what has been this, this popularity of his party under this more nationalist view. So Euro, a little bit weaker. That BTP Bund spread definitely needs to be watched uh, as a kind of a European, uh, I, I guess, barometer of sentiment. I think Italy definitely has ratcheted up now uh, a few levels and is back up the hierarchy of, of real risks to the market this week. And we'll look at that in a second. Uh, otherwise, the pound actually doing the reverse. You've got a bit of a divergence here. It's definitely a euro weakness story because cable uh, is flat. Um, dollar by product of that euro move a little bit firmer. Uh, but cable up around its pivot level. And we'll talk about Boris. He's obviously been busy again, promising the world and more at the weekend. Uh, and we'll pick through some of those headlines and what do they mean. Uh, but yeah, as I'm delivering this briefing, just keep an eye on the euro. Uh, you've got that S1 near-term support which coincides quite clearly with uh, a nice area of, of technical relevance you can see here from some of the previous week's price action so as we come down to this 12 14 type area um, the there you go just testing it right now be interested to see how the price action responds at around these these levels but again sam will add his his view um, so let's have a quick look then and a run through, first of all, uh, the calendar uh, and a couple things to have a look at. Before I do, though, I thought I'd just recap on this. Uh, last week, particularly interesting, Sam was saying I was off the desk on Friday afternoon, but apparently uh, my understanding is that Trump went on a bit of a, bit of a tirade on, on Twitter and was firing out you know, everything and anything in regards to China, witch hunt. Uh, Epstein, 
just everything that was going on at the moment. And this is what it's led to. Um, volatility is back. S&P 500 registers longest streak of big daily moves since the beginning of the year. And so just looking here at the S&P 500 intraday percentage range, you can see this cluster of sizable price activity that we've had. And of course, this then lays its hand to that uh, kind of risk off rotation. And of course, gold had a phenomenal week last week, gains in excess of 4%, you know, way outperforming uh, anything else you can get your hands on effectively when it comes to uh, haven assets uh, in focus. So can that continue? Well, again, let's have a look at the week and see what we've got on the agenda um, to see whether or not these trends uh, have gone any further legs or not. Today is particularly quiet in terms of scheduled events. There really is not a lot going on at all, not unless you're trading uh, softs like wheat, soy, corn, these types of products, because later on this afternoon, late afternoon, you've got the uh, the WASD report. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's very quiet. So moving on, let's, let's look at the UK for a start, and that will bring in some of the both economic and political updates to look out for if you're looking at sterling. From an economics point of view, uh, it's an interesting week for the UK because on Tuesday you get the latest claimant count rate, employment change and average hourly earnings. Now you'll remember uh, hourly earnings and just generally wages in the UK has been a bit of a sweet spot in terms of the kind of the, the measurements that would lead MPC members to want to be hawkish the incredibly multi-decade low unemployment rate which is leading to the best decade high wages at the moment in the UK would all be favourable of tightening conditions in terms of its policy ramification. However, as we go further through into the week, uh, that's Tuesday. Wednesday, we get UK CPI. Uh, and of course, then just given uh, what we've had with this kind of front loading of infantries in Q1, that then basically translating into weaker demand for Q2 and how is this now impacting as well this political uncertainty the consumers confidence to continue to spend and its demand for goods so we get CPI on Wednesday always a key figure um, then on Thursday we get then that real consumer metric UK retail sales coming out and so quite an interesting week for economic data for sure for the pound but overall, obviously, a lot of the headline press has been dominated by uh, Mr. Johnson, once again, the new prime minister, where he's pledged, basically, since he's come in, he's pledged £2 billion every week. Um, reading about it at the weekend, about this new, a new £2 billion worth going into the, um, basically, UK's jail system. I know that's not the correct terminology, but... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the point being is that we are pretty much at maximum capacity. I think it's something like, I was watching the news last night, there's 84,000 inmates, I think, in Britain. I think the maximum capacity is about 86,000. And he's suggesting then that we should have harsher punishments, longer terms, and we should have, therefore, you need more money, more facilities, and, and so on. But all of this, of course, has come through really key things, uh, more Brexit planning, uh, downside protection planning, 2 billion, NHS, 2 billion, and now uh, this latest kind of infrastructure around the jail system, another 2 billion. All of which, though, he's not given any details about where the 6 billion is coming from. Now, a couple things here. The government's own appointed body, the Office of Budget Responsibility, their report, which they issued about six weeks ago, said that if we have a no-deal Brexit, the budget deficit in the UK, the immediate aftermath, the impact will be to the tune of £30 billion. And he's going on a spending spree of £6 billion. The point being is, I'm not trying to politically criticise Boris here, but it's quite clear what his strategy is here. Uh, and that is that a general election is in the offing. Uh, I think it's uh, an absolutely all of what this is, is as the headlines would suggest, um, Johnson being accused of spending for votes. And that's exactly what he's doing. 
And I don't blame him because ultimately this is a, a tactic that has been successfully deployed and rolled out by the President Donald Trump, where he's promised the world delivered arguably less than half of what he said. But that's not the point. You know, we live in a new realm of economics and, you know, personally, part of my frustration about the Remain campaign, for instance, in this country, is its obsession with economics. Have you not learnt that doesn't work? It doesn't resonate correctly with with the majority. Uh, and Boris, you know, definitely, obviously, with Dominic Cummings under his belt being the chief strategizer, I think it's absolutely just going down this path of really striking an accord, an emotive one, uh, trying to g this up for a general election. So, yeah, all of this uh, is just again political posturing. What does it mean for the pound? Well, I don't think you should really look to, look at this tactically to um, put in as a variable into your trading strategies. More of this, this is more about the medium term and what's going to transpire over the case of the next coming weeks about this issue of a general election. Of course, Boris at this point is saying that's absolutely not what the government is doing and we are not looking to call a general election. Uh, but one thing you should have learnt by now if you weren't familiar with politics over the last three years, never believe a politician as far as you can throw him. Um, with that being said, what I am interested in this week is this is the pound on a daily continuation chart and we are at really interesting levels now. That's that double bottom that we had in the aftermath of the actual, this is the EU referendum vote of course, that seismic repricing of the pound that we had on the evening of the, the surprise vote on the referendum. This was then that double bottom, October, and then retested in the beginning of 2017, and we are within a whisker of that level. Now, given where we are, absolutely, even within today's session, that's not out of the realms of being tested, but definitely this week, that is a big target. And I do believe that if that breaks, I don't see any reason why we don't go flying down to 115 in pretty rapid fashion. Uh, the only thing I think that could counteract this is, does Trump come in and basically intervene in the dollar? Now we know that he uh, has a, a track record of, of doing this verbally. Is there any kind of physical element where he'd want to step in and do that? Likelihood of that low. Uh, but he'll be fully mindful of the, the the fact that you know if the euro's weakening, if the pound's weakening, by default the the dollar's going to strengthen, and if China's l allowing its currency to weaken, all of this is against then the ability of the U.S. to remain competitive. So really, he's got to start upping his game to weaken his own currency. I think that might be the saving grace of this pound getting really crushed um, in the medium term. But yeah, definitely this week, all eyes on that level. <clears throat> I would definitely be keeping a, a very close eye on there. At the moment, obviously, we're, we're moving in the op opposite direction in the intraday environment, um, but definitely needs watching. Uh, as I'm speaking, I can see <clears throat> Euro's just broken that level, and you can see the extension there. Um, as we broke through technically that level, a little further push through, Nice little break there. Gold as well under a bit of pressure as by default the dollar strengthens. Now up two tenths, managing to get ourselves back below that 1500, uh, which is going to be quite key, I know. There's some long-term levels I know Sam's got his eye on that he can, he can share with you. Anyway, let's just quickly run through the other headlines of note. Obviously, the trade war is key. Um, over the weekend, I was kind of looking for any comments um, in regard to China or the US and basically they remain absolutely far apart it seems at this point. Um, not helping either I feel is this situation which is kind of escalating in its um, in its violence that's happening in Hong Kong. Um, China being quite explicit that they do not want any interference from the UK or America but as that situation gets to the point where I can't really think of how that's going to resolve itself and the biggest 
uh, obviously flashpoint would come if there was some kind of Chinese mainland Chinese military occupation coming in to control the situation. That would be a massive escalation that would probably then cause great decisions to have to come out of the Western world of how they're going to tackle that or not. And so, yeah, I definitely at this point uh, on the trade side, they remain very far apart. Uh, and one thing that we've seen here is Goldman Sachs. They've come out last night and they've basically said that the fears of a US-China trade war leading to a recession are increasing. Uh, Goldman's no longer expect a trade deal before the presidential election at the end of 2020. They expect tariffs targeting the remaining 300 billion of US imports from China to go into effect. And they've also lowered their, excuse me, their fourth quarter US growth forecast by 20 basis points to 1.8%. Again, just to refresh your memory, what was the GDP that came in um, in terms of the previous one for Q2 at 2.1%. So a continuation of a slowdown in North American growth, but in fitting with the overall global growth story uh, that we've been pricing in. So, yeah, still hearing a lot of these kind of bearish calls uh, about the, the near-term horizon for sure that seemingly are growing at this point. Um, the other thing, before we jump back to the calendar, look at some of the other economic highlights is, is Italy. Um, and I was just looking at this firstly not sure if you were aware of this but um, every quarter or so the rating agencies S&P Moody's and Fitch have an update and the ones that are very much in focus Italy is is one of them um, they avoided a credit downgrade from Fitch ratings on Friday but the agency has effectively left them on negative outlook um, citing high debt levels and a fresh round of political uncertainty. So they're on watch to be reviewed in the coming months. And I think that's probably an appropriate stance given the fact that they need to see what happens yet. The president of Italy has not yet um, declared that there is going to be an election as much as Salvini has intonated towards that being the next step given he wants to break the existing coalition with the Five Star Movement. So without that, without knowing that next political phase, I think the rating agency has to just sit on its hands for the time being. But point being here that they've avoided a downgrade, which would have been obviously uh, very detrimental to their assets and uh, the spread BTPs over bunds. And that definitely needs to be watched. Here was a great article. I'm going to share the link into the Training Live chat room. Um, I'll share it on our YouTube uh, as a comment as well. But basically, this is a short, sharp, 10-minute read of everything you need to be aware of for the political scenarios with its FX and rate implications about what the next potential uh, moves might be uh, for the Italy and its political situation that's developing at the moment. Very great read here from the guys at ING. Uh, one of the things here, this is a, a really fascinating graphic, actually, because what they're saying is that Salvini, well, just let me quickly show you in Italy, um, the league is the grey line here. So when the, uh, we had the hung parliament in Italy, in, not that long ago, what, a year ago, they had to form a coalition with what was by far the most popular party, which was the anti-establishment five star. And you can see here, the two converged within about three months of the two parties coming together. And the five star basically have been losing popularity ever since their first day in office and quite the opposite from the more nationalist viewed league under Salvini, who have just surged to popularity almost. They're at about 30 percent, 38 percent in the polls. All you need in Italy for the threshold for a parliamentary majority is 40 percent. They are just off that. And the expectations are that given their stance and their views on, on issues like immigration, the party that they'd probably team up with on a coalition would be the Brothers of Italy, which are the most furthest right-leaning in terms of their political stance. So, yeah, interesting times ahead for sure for Italy. OK, back to the calendar. Quick wrap-up then, and let's hear from, from Sam on the technical side. So other things I've got my eye on this week, um, definitely... Uh, growth potential in Europe. 
And actually, we are looking for a contraction in the German economy to be announced on Wednesday morning. So look out for that. That precedes then the European GDP reading we're going to get on Wednesday morning. And then Thursday is the main day for US economic data. And I do feel like US economic data does carry a real renewed level of interest given this market's um, indecision on whether or not to buy into Jerome Powell's mid-cycle adjustment phrasing. You know, is Jerome Powell right? Is this unprecedented times where actually we just need a little kink in interest rates to then resume the upward trend of the, the increasing rate cycle? This is why economic data like retail sales, New York, Empire, Philly Fed, industrial manufacturing production, they're all coming out on Thursday. So really key day for US data. Uh, and then on Friday, things tail off fairly quiet. Maybe foreign direct investment in China could be quite interesting, just given everything that's going on there domestically. And then you've got the University of Michigan sentiment, the preliminary reading uh, on Friday. Okay, um, that is pretty much it from me. So really, it comes down to continuation of uh, focus on the trade war rhetoric, any developments there. Um, US data key on Thursday and then keeping on further developments of Italy in regards to then this political situation with Salvini and that, that BTP bun spread as an indicator of risk. And, <coughs> and then finally, that big level in cable. Um, the trigger point on that, I feel, doesn't necessarily need to come politically out of the UK because I don't think we're going to get too much more. I think it will be a continuation of what Boris has been doing. Um, the data could well act as a bit of a catalyst and underlying that as well, dollar movement will be key given how close that level is. Okay guys, that's it from me. As you can hear, my voice is now fading, so I'll hand you over to Sam. Cheers. Thanks, Sam, and uh, I think I speak for everyone saying that we're, we're glad you're better than you were on, uh, on Friday. Well looked after. We'll have a, a quick look over the, the euro to begin with as uh, breaking out of uh, those lows that we had at the back end of last week what a support level it, it had been and the 112 handle uh, is as big to be honest and just having a look back here to the beginning uh, of well sorry the last couple of days of, uh, of July you can just see the importance of this point so uh, we then retested it after breaking through on the sip and we're just uh, hitting well the low of the day is uh, half a tick below 112 so really key level obviously to the upside keeping an, uh, a close eye on those lows that we did just break through uh, as well so we'd have that marked up uh, to the downside if we were to get through 112 which of course we're not at the moment and it's holding quite firmly uh, you've got the the s1 from the day but also we'll be looking down to any of those previous highs that we did break through uh, on uh, the the fifth uh, with last Monday where the euro was just pushing higher and higher and higher against that dollar so uh, perhaps um, that push that we had last Monday wasn't necessarily warranted as much and I know we were coming in last week and they were talking about you know an extra quarter point being priced into a cut and, and really the euro just just pushed you know through all these resistance points like they weren't there but that now gives you the opportunity is uh, looking for support just below where we're trading now and just having a quick look at any of these these trend lines uh, to the downside We've got a nice one that would be coming in uh, around the s1 as uh, s2 as well so keeping a, a close eye on that uh, for the euro obviously for the pound as Ant mentioned that big level uh, not too far away now from the low that we reached this morning uh, just over 30 ticks which is incredible uh, to think just how uh, far uh, we have come since the beginning of may uh, and the pound obviously going to have to just have that marked up and if that was to go you've got to imagine there's going to be a, a decent decent push below there and a, and a fast money move to be honest I think you might obviously the first test of it and it will first retest of it have a, a decent level of support uh, but once that goes it could really uh, get quite ugly for the pound however this morning we have just had a, a decent enough uh, push uh, haven't seen anything out on the headlines but the pivot on the first test you can see acting as a, a strong resistance point to the upside if we were to get through you can see a nice area just above uh, 121 from Friday and then you've got 
Uh, if I just move this above the camera as well, you'll see was also the low that we had back on the first. So that's a, a key level, key line in the sand. We never really had the opportunity to, to get up towards the 123 or 24, which uh, would have acted as a good level uh, of resistance. Uh, and as you can see, while the euro last Monday was just pushing higher and higher, uh, the pound was just drifting, drifting to the downside. We have, uh, of course, after those the, the poor uh, numbers that we had uh, on Friday, uh, out of the, the UK uh, just broken out of that range so any retest of that area I think will certainly interest people around 121 the pivot for now uh, containing price having a quick look over the Japanese yen uh, as well so we've just got the dollar side of things strengthening not just against the the euro we saw but also the yen here uh, we had a bit of a, a false break of this trend and I'd still look to to have this on uh, let me just modify that a bit you can see it's sort of contained there as well, but both to the upside and the downside. So we're keeping a, a close watch on that should we get any breakthrough um, of this. And, and that's pretty much how I would have the yen for now, waiting for the opportunity either way. Um, obviously keeping maybe an eye on, on what stocks do in the, the afternoon for any correlation there. And this morning, just having a look over at the, the moving averages. I'm just going to quickly put the, the moving average cross on as it already has the, the two that I want to talk about. Uh, the 200 day moving average holding price up as we know we've talked about this we couldn't close below and it's acted as a good level of support we've now got the 50 the red line here acting as that resistance level so worth keeping a you know a close eye on that the 50 certainly the last time we we broke through it and then acted as support back in june could be looking for a similar type reaction there uh, certainly on the daily chart above where we're trading other than that 50 you do have some key really key resistance around 29.62 previous all-time high support when we then broke through and also a decent breakdown area from the first of the month uh, so worth keeping a, a close watch on that just over three percent away from that all-time high if we have a week like we did last week um, well the last few days that we had the last week will be up towards uh, that that high again there so more intraday obviously keep a close eye on that the, the 50 DMA uh, if you can obviously just put the pivots on here to have a quick look around you can see we are just from last 15 minutes or so just come up to test this and then here you go you've got that third test now so uh, had this marked up and you can see strong uh, enough reaction with the low volume there uh, of that third test to the downside slightly steeper but we are getting squeezed in from both ways if we were to have a more aggressive move to the downside again I'd be looking to see can we get a third test of this trend line from the low that we had uh, overnight on uh, Monday night Tuesday morning and then obviously the Wednesday test of that as well looking to come in at the moment around S1 and of course Friday's low and that's a key level uh, as well from the high of the 8th gold as Anthony mentioned was just drifting lower this morning 1500 uh, has broken you've got quite a lot of previous uh, resistance around there or I should say around the S1 as well which had broken through uh, next key levels I know we've got a couple of trend lines that could well come into play I'm just going to move that above the um, uh, above the camera so the higher the 18th you can see that coming into the breakthrough that we had on the 6th uh, and the seventh overnight so that retest of it coming in around if it was to come in now 1494 uh, which looks like a quick, quite key level we've also got some support from the seventh there as well to the upside uh, any of those retests uh, of those lows uh, that we had broken through would of course be worthwhile having on uh, and maybe later in the week likewise with the S&P but this one to the upside just keeping an eye on these trend lines uh, that was squeezing price over the last couple of sessions or so so it might be later on in the week we do get that breakthrough but if the dollar is to strengthen and it's already up 0.18 uh, percent gold might just have a, a leg lower this week whereas you know last Monday of course the dollar was incredibly weak uh, and we did push higher uh, in gold as well quick look over to see what uh, the DAX is up to on the open we have pushed higher however finding resistance up near those R1 levels and um, I know the, the S1 and those lows from Thursday well I say the low from Thursday was the initial uh, the, the last support that we had back on Friday which had pushed things uh, to the upside 
quite key resistance on Friday, Thursday's high and also the low that we had back on the second. That's your line in the sand for, for the DAX this morning. If we can get back up there, you can imagine the, the 50 DMA uh, for the S&P might come into play and, and that little trend line would actually get a breakthrough. Quick look at oil to wrap things up. Decent push higher on, uh, on Friday after that. Well, let's just put this on that, that low that we had from... Uh, well, the month, but it was also, of course, the low uh, that we had, uh, well, yeah, from June and, and January uh, as well. So really key level uh, of uh, support there in oil when the recovery has been as strong. A lot of uh, resistance above where we're trading near the R1 today from those previous highs of the 5th and the 6th. Uh, not too much going on this morning. The pivot to the downside looks pretty important as well, or just a bit below, 10 ticks below, 53.75, high of the 7th, low of the 6th, and low of the 1st uh, as well. Any questions as usual, please uh, do let us know. Uh, we'll be doing the, the strategy report as usual. Uh, the pound is coming back up to, to test that high uh, from the morning, but 121.06, a key level that might give an opportunity for uh, that further leg down to, to 120. Hope you have a, a good trading day uh, and I'll catch you in the chat.